You weren't going to watch this. I just couldn't stay away. It certainly is putting on a show for him. Oh, Telephone! Okay. Keep your eye on him. Over to your sixth sense and get ready for the acrobatic. And no matter what happens, keep that camera going. Okay. Glenn, uh, signal Tommy to get ready for the altitude dive, will you? Don't get up there good and high. Ready on that any aircraft gun, Charlie? Yes, sir. Now you understand this. Tommy's going to climb to 4,000 feet and stunt above the anti-aircraft burst. Uh, Charlie, be sure that those shells explode at 3,500. 3,500 she is. That'll give Tommy 500 feet leeway. Glenn, uh, what is the starting signal? Tommy's going to dip his wing when he's ready. I'll give him the flags when we're ready. He's going to circle once and then do his stuff when the first shell burst. Ready, camera? All set. Ready, Charlie? Ready. Right, go, Glenn. He's got it. Here he comes to circle. Stand ready, everybody. Here he comes. It's up to you, Charlie. Great. Come for two of them, Charlie. Get that dive. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh, 
Oh, Tommy, are you all right? You're lucky you didn't break your neck. Tommy, that was great. Magnificent. We got every foot of it. Well, it was even better than I expected. Oh, please, Mr. Sheen, not, not now. Come on, Tommy. Just a minute, Betty Lou. You were hoping I'd crack up? Well, accidents will happen. You can always use a good thrill. Oh, I see. You all right, Tommy? I think so, but I'm beginning to boil inside. Oh, he's got to go see a doctor. Seems I've been a chump. Sheehan was hoping I'd crack up. What's that? Oh, nothing, Mr. Smith, only I suppose I got a little too excited over our beautiful shot. Well, he didn't even ask if Tommy was hurt. What happened up there, Tommy? Oh, the control stuck. But you can't blame me for that. Well, you don't suppose for a moment that I would deliberately... Of course not. And for that reason, I'm going to see that it doesn't happen again. In the future, every plane that leaves this field will be inspected by my mechanics. But I am the director of this picture, Mr. Smith. And I am the manager of this field. You'll consider that everybody was very lucky this time. That's all. Not quite, Paul. I just want to tell Sheen that he's got to get another man to do his stunts. I'm through. Why, that'll put me in a hole. He can't do that to me, Mr. Smith, can he? Well, I'm afraid he can, if that's the way he feels about it. That's it. These crates are flimsy enough without pushing them to the limit, hoping they'll crack up just for a thrill. Let's go. You think he means it? Looks like it. You better phone Hollywood and have another stunt pilot sent out here right away. And another plane? Yes, of course. All I've got left to shoot now is the French village and the finish. Tell him to pound on it. Yes, sir. Was a pip, wasn't it? A billy. About that uh, stunt pilot, I could make a suggestion. Listen, Toots, you're the hairdresser around here, not the suggestion maker. You stick to keeping the leading ladies Marcel in place. When better suggestions are made, I'll make them. Nothing wrong with the young man. A good night's rest and he'll be up and doing. Of course, he'll be a little sore for a few days. Yeah. You're giving us information. I guess I wasn't going to burn up. Burned up? You were practically incinerated. <laughs> what happened to Skeeter? I don't know. This movie company has everybody in a turmoil. All right, I guess I was a fool to get mixed up with him. We're advertising for a transport pilot to be crashing. No, you're right. I'll be glad to get you back on your regular run. All of you. It's me. How's it feel being back on the job again? Great. Anything exciting happen around here? No, but it promises to pick up. The movie company is shooting that French village set they just built. <laughs> shooting is right. Yeah, they have French soldiers, German soldiers, planes, tanks, artillery. You want to take a look? No, thanks. I got a flight report to make out. I'll see you later. What do you got there? An idea. Run over to the workshop and I'll show it to you. Okay. So that's a camera gun. Yes. The Army uses them for combat training at all the aviation fields. It's mounted on a plane just like a machine gun. Two aviation cadets go up for combat practice and come back with a record of their efficiency. In pictures. Good idea. Great stuff. I transferred to aviation in France. And when I went out for training, they stuck me in a plane, gave me a machine gun, and sent me out to practice. Oh, I was having a great time until I happened to realize that the other planes had big black crosses on them. German planes? Yeah, I'd flown over the lines. What'd you do? Beat it back for the field wide open. <laughs> Just made it, too. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do with this? I thought I'd catch some action shots of these war planes the movie company's using. I'll catch them in all sorts of positions and then enlarge the pictures so I can study the effects of wing drag. From them, I might be able to determine why our planes lose so much speed in the vertical bank. Good idea. 
Say, hey, I was reading an article the other night about a professor out in California who's experimenting with a new wing that reduces the drag 50%. Say, hey, I'd like to read that. Hello? Oh. Oh, yes. For you. Yeah? Oh, thanks, Shorty. I'll be right over. I got to run along, Tommy. I'll dig up that article for you. Lots of luck with a camera gun. Sounds like I had a good day for it. <laughs> sure does. Ready, camera? Ready, sound? Okay. Ready, Charlie? Yes, sir. All right. All right, quiet. Roll them. Speed. Action! No, 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 not a bit like it. Go get Charlie. Boys, please, go back to your position and this time give me something. After all, this is a war. People are dying all around you. There's shots of explosions. Now meet it this time. Charlie, for pity's sake, those explosions are terrible. They're like a puff of a cigarette. Now, no matter what happens, give me an explosion. Okay, okay, okay. Please. Well, what's this? This is a mixing panel that is used to control the levels of the actors' voices. What do you do? Well, I'm the mixer. Gee, Tommy, did you see them? <laughs> Boys, they shoot them up, don't they? They sure do. See that man over there? Well, he's the bomb. The bomb? Sure. When a shell's supposed to land, he presses a button and zowie. All right, places, everybody. Come on, ready? Oh, boys, they're going to do it again. Come on, Wags. Glad you came along. That kid is talking an arm off me. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask a few questions myself. What's this all about? Sound is picked up by the microphone hanging over the actors' heads. It travels into the mixing panel where the volume is controlled. It's recorded in the truck. The cameras photograph the action, and we record the sound in synchronization. You get it? Clear as mud. <laughs> Ready, camera? Okay. Ready, sound? Ready, Charlie? That explosion was great. Stunning airplanes so long he's crash happy. Hi, Earl. Man, how are you? When do we start? Start? Man, you're finished. Ken wants to see you. Come on. Was that okay, Mr. Sheehan? Yeah, print the first take. What's the next setup? 
Close shot on the Red Cross station. Yes, sir. This school is quite in from Burbank. If there's anything wrong with it, I'd be... Anything wrong with it? It's ready to fall. An old job like this can't stand that kind of a trip. Uh, now a grease monkey starts giving me orders. You know what this plane is? Yeah, a wreck. This plane was flown by Bishop, the great English ace. He's got a past. Yeah, but no future. Well, as we put it in the shop for about eight hours. Hey, now, like, don't argue with me, big boy. I'm going to make my report. You take it up with Paul Smith. Who's he? My boss. Huh. Telling me when I can fly, huh? Yeah, uh, we'll see about that. Hello. Hello. I heard there was an authentic Allied pursuit plane on the field. Yes, lady, this is it. Flown by Bishop. He shot down over 60 enemy planes. 60? Yep, look. There's where he kept his record. Oh, my, this is the real thing. Absolutely gilt edge. 100% authentic. Here, get up there. Put your foot in there. Stand up. There you are. Sit in the seat of the mighty. Stand in the footprints of history. Wait a minute, I gotta... Here, put this helmet on. There you are. Now, in a few minutes, we'll be flying through the clouds. Oh, but I couldn't. Couldn't what? Follow the trail of the immortals? Fly with the great Martin? Well, of course you could. Heroes blazed the trails for us. Gave us wings. Now, who are we to deny them? Well... Didn't you put it that way? Yeah, it's a ticket. Sit down there. Oh, Bill, turn that prop over, will you? Sure. Switch off? Switch off. He's just proven to me that I'm crazy. probably knows his ship better than I do. They used to call him flying coffins, didn't they? The fool. The crazy fool. Well, nothing ever happens to anyone that flies with the great Martin. 
Say, what's the matter with you, boy? Did you forget to bring your box of aspirin with you? Why, you punch-drunk clown, you missed death by second. Oh, Tommy, please. Tommy? Oh, tailspin Tommy, huh? Yeah, I heard the going got too tough for you. And leave the flying to the men. Stop it! Oh, the big four flusher! Oh, he didn't force me into the plane. I climbed in because I wanted to. Yeah, you can climb in any time you want for a ride. That is, unless you have to ask permission. <laughs> now, hey, what is it this time? Just an unrehearsed little action scene, Mr. Smith. Yes, I saw most of it. Of course, what you do in the taking of your picture, Mr. Sheehan, is your business. But I refuse to allow any unnecessary stunting over this field, particularly of this idiotic nature. Who are you? My name is Smith, Paul Smith. My mechanic told you your plane needed work. Is that right? I'm not taking orders from any grease monkey. Easy there, mister. Now Easy. listen, from now on, you stay on the ground unless you're actually engaged in a scene in the picture. Do you understand? Yeah, I get it. Satisfactory, Mr. Smith? Anything is satisfactory that protects the lives of my employees. Come on, Tommy, I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I blew up like that, Paul, but that kind of stuff gets my goat. After Tex warning him the way he did. Well, I guess the fellow wouldn't be in that business unless he was a trifle off the beam. I only hope to get away from here before something serious happens. Well, how long have they got to go? Well, Sheehan wants to clean up with that big dogfight sequence. I ought to get him out of here tomorrow night. I hope. By the way, where's Skeeter? I don't know. I haven't seen him since we landed this morning. Well, when he checks in, tell him I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. Careful, soldier. You'll wake up your mother. She wouldn't wake up for a little thing like that. No? No. I heard the doctor say he gave her something to put her to sleep. Oh. Uncle Skeeter. Yeah? What's the matter with Mom? Well, soldier, the doctors haven't been able to figure that out yet. Then what's all this talk about an operation? Oh, well, you know how doctors are. They just figure that anything. Is Mom all right, Doctor? Of course, son. You wouldn't sit with her while I talk to your uncle. But I'm the man of the house. I ought to hear what you're going to say. You run along, soldier, and do like the doc says. And if there's anything very important, I'll tell you about it later. Promise? Honest, cross my heart. Uncle Skeeter. Yeah? You're not going to leave tonight, are you? Not for a minute, soldier. Well, Doc, what's the verdict? Your sister's condition is critical. Operation? Within 24 hours. I'd suggest John Willard. He's the best in this part of the country. Sure, get him. You make the arrangements, will you, Doc? Of course. It'll be expensive. Yeah, I know. Go ahead and get him. I'll, I'll get the money. I'll, I'll dig it up. Uncle Skeeter! Yeah? I'm coming. I'll leave everything up to you, Doc. Trying to figure a new stunt for my camera gun. Gonna fly? Sure. Take me up? Oh, I don't know. There's nothing famous about this plane. <laughs> I am sorry about that trip with Martin. It was stupid of me. Oh, that's all right. I guess I did fly off the handle. No, I shouldn't have gone. I'm no wide-eyed schoolgirl. I've been around airplanes enough to know better. Oh, I understand. Famous ship and all that. You didn't know it was. Well, let's just say we were lucky and forget about it. Then everything's like it was? Back to normal. Just you and me. <clears throat> well, I hope I'm interrupting. Well, no, it's quite all right. You see, well, that is Tommy and I were just talking. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to go. See you later. Okay. A little nervous. Yeah, she's nervous. 
You're, you're all right. Cool, calm, and collected, I suppose, yeah. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad to see you. He seems to have lost his pep. Of course, that's none of my business until it begins to affect his work. Has it? Well, there were a couple of mistakes in his flight reports yesterday. Well, you see, Paul, that was my fault. I was... Oh, stop it, Tommy. Don't kid the shock troops. Just get him straightened out, that's all. You know, I told you I wanted to see him. I haven't. That means you haven't seen him. So I take it he didn't come home last night. You know, late hours and big nights are not exactly the best training for a man who takes the lives of a dozen passengers in his hands every day. That's right. I'll see what I can do. Early start, eh? Yeah, big day. Big days after big nights make it kind of tough, don't they? I don't quite get that, but I'm sure it's not original. I was just wondering why you and Skeeter never think of me when you're going on a party. Party? Me and Skeeter? <laughs> Say, I haven't had two minutes alone with him after dark since we got here. He's the coyest lad I've ever met. I thought I had him last night, then that kid Bobby dragged him off again. Ah, that's good. Come on, snap it up. I'm sick of this location. Not sick of me by any chance, are you? Violently. More good news, boss. Eddie got in a fight last night and broke his arm. Boy, oh boy, what a picture. Now I'm stuck with a dog fight. Unless I can sell Tailspin Tommy a bill of I don't care what you do. Get me someone to fly that plane. Okay, Chief. What plane? Congratulations, Tommy. Thanks. Why? We just made an actor out of you. How come? One of our pilots broke his arm. You want me to take his place? Right. We're having a dog fight tomorrow, and I want you to pilot one of the planes. Why me? Because there's $500 in it. Simple little thing. No doubling anybody. You'll be photographed really playing a part. We'll center on you in an Allied plane, a German plane piloted by Martin. You'll both have machine guns and fire at each other with blanks. Martin's supposed to get you. We'll put a bomb in your plane, and you touch it off, and then go into a spin. We'll follow you down with the camera focused on your falling plane. And when do I follow this spin? When I wave to you. I'll be in the camera ship. Oh, it'll be a great shot. That was part of the sequence we were just shooting, with Martin watching your falling plane. Oh, it was. Well, he was watching the wrong boy. You mean you won't do it? Well, that's a general idea. But, but say, you fellows don't often have a chance to pick up $500 for just a couple hours' work, do you? No. But if ever I spin in a burning ship, it won't be to please the customer. It'll be because I can't help it. Excuse me. I didn't think he'd have the nerve to do it. I was kind of hoping he would. There'd be no one to pull him off you up in the air. What are you trying to do, get my goat? Kind of slipping, aren't you? Hey, was that Tommy just left here? Say, I'm not talking to you. I don't often get a run around like this. Oh, well, now, you know how it is if a fella gets... Well, I'll explain it later. Was that Tommy? Yes, and he just lost $500. Lost $500? Tommy never had $500. Hey, say that again. Well, he just turned it down. Five hundred dollars? Hey, why don't you give Skeeter a crack at it? What? Can you pilot a plane in a dog fight? Can I pilot a plane? Me? You say, do you know who you're talking to? For five hundred dollars, I can fly two planes and run between them. Wow, well, step right into my office. Chief, you know Skeeter, don't you? Sure. Hello, Skeeter. Hello, Mr. Shin. No, Earl Martin? Hi, Skeeter. Hi, Martin. Now, Chief Skeeter's going to fly that plane for us. Good. Uh, uh, Glenn, call lunch. And take him over the wardrobe and get him fitted out. Martin, you better go along with him and talk over what you're going to do in the air. See, Martin's flying the other ship. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, fella, I'll tell you how I see it. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Mr. Shane. This means a lot to me. It means a lot to all of us. Relax, Charlie. Relax. Hot, isn't it? Oh, boy. You all set for the dog fight? Yes, sir. As soon as they get the planes lined up, I'll load the machine gun. <laughs> Have you got the real bullets for the close-up? Yes, sir. They're in the tent. Well, you want to check on them very carefully. Oh, sure. There's no chance of getting mixed up. Here's the blanks over here. 
Say, uh, you got any idea when you'll get to it? Right after lunch. As soon as you finish, you better check up on those guns. <sighs> I'm finished now. Okay, Tommy. Thanks, Dick. So that's her camera gun, huh? Sure is. Does she do her stuff? I got some tips. I understand they're doing a dog fight this afternoon. I'm going up above and see if I can get some action stuff. Well, there's no accounting for taste. I had a brother in the Navy. On his day off, he always hired a rowboat. <laughs> Skeeter says you're the only one he'll trust me with. Do you miss him? Miss him? Yeah, Uncle Skeeter. He's been staying over at our house for a while. Was there anything wrong? Didn't you hear? He's been looking after him. Mom's sick. Well, it's not serious, I hope. Well, the doctor says she needs an operation right away. Uncle Skeeter's worried. It's gonna cost a lot of money. But he's got it all figured out. Yeah, I'll bet. You'll hunt up a money tree and pick it, huh? Nah, he's doing a stunt for the movies this afternoon. Maybe I'd better help him, huh? Steady, bang. He's flying over the line. See anything with the ammunition dump? Gotta be careful. These fellas drop out of the sun on you. <laughs> ah, raining party. We'll take care of him. <laughs> oh, here comes the red squadron. Head on, rags were surrounded. <laughs> Lining up the ships as I came in. It'll be quite a show, I guess. Yeah, quite. What are you going to do? I don't know. I haven't got the heart to watch one of those old ships in the spin. I think I'll stay here and straighten out our safety parachute. Got a new idea on it. Yeah? Yeah. Seems to me we're not figuring enough strain for the weight. Come on down to the shop, won't you, I'll show you what I mean. Oh, wait a minute, won't it keep? I want to see what they're going to do out there. Oh, come on, it'll only take a minute. You haven't got anything to do. You think of the silliest things to do at the craziest time. Oh, well, keep your shirt on. Come on, get in here. You see, the way a man strapped in makes a difference. The straps are not tight, you get an added strain in proportion to the weight. Well, I hope you know what you're talking about, I don't. Well, I'll show you what I'm getting at. If you're going to keep pulling things like this until people think you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny? What's the big idea? What's the big idea in going out to spin one of those old war planes? Oh, so somebody snitched, huh? No, nobody snitched. They asked me to do it first. Well, $500 is $500. Yes, and a broken neck is a broken neck. Well, you let go of that rope and let me down out of here. I'll let you down when I get good and ready. Let me down! You're probably the dumbest lad that ever put a foot in a cockpit. Why, you've never flown one of those old warplanes. You let go of that rope! If I thought you'd land on your head, I would. Hey, listen, Tommy, you... I need that $500. You don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. And the next time you get in trouble, you come to me first. Don't be the strong man who suffers in silence. Happy landings. Oh, a fine oil candy, 
not to be. Now, pilots, uh, would you give me your attention for a minute? I'll, uh, I just want to recheck your instructions to be sure that you all know what you're going to do up there. Now, Martin is in the German squadron. He has his instructions and take off on signal. And Skeeter, I want you to pull out when I signal. For the individual dog fight with Martin. Now, uh, Martin will fire at you. You loop, get on his tail, and let him have it. We'll be right there with the camera plane and get all of it. Now, do you all understand? Okay, Glenn. Here we go. Here you are, handsome. Switch off. Switch off. Contact. Contact. Okay, Charlie, light that signal.
Yes? Oh. Well, you stick right there and let me know if he says anything. Martin is still alive. The doctors don't think he'll recover consciousness. But I've got a couple of men there in case he does. Now, in the meantime, I'd like to know just how this thing happened. Well, sure. Well, I'll 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 wait wait a minute. Wait a minute. You tell it, Duncan. Well, we went up to do the scene like Mr. Sheehan directed, and somebody put real bullets in the machine gun, I guess. Hey, wait a minute. I loaded that machine gun with blanks. Don't try to push this off on me, buddy. I'm not trying to push it off on you. Oh, no, well, who did you mean? The real bullets got in there, didn't they? Now, wait a minute. I'll ask the question. I still don't understand why you took this fellow's place after he made arrangements to do the stunt. Well, I was offered a chance to do it, and I turned it down because I thought it was silly and dangerous. And when he found out I was going to do it, he was afraid I'd get hurt. I thought I stood a better chance of not getting hurt. Was the stunt so dangerous? Well, it's been done before. Well, Any time you deliberately put one of those old crates into a spin, you take your life in your hands. And your only reason for taking Skeeter's place was to protect him. Sure, because he's that kind of a guy. What did you take the job in the first place for? Me? Well, I could use the 500. He had to send his sister to the hospital. Well, I don't know whether his sister got there or not, but I know that someone else made it. And his sister made it, too. We made arrangements immediately. Well, that's all very nice, if it's true. You knew you had to have an individual dog fight with Martin this afternoon, didn't you? Yes. You knew you had to fire at him. Yes, but, well, Martin fired at him, too. I get that, Mr. Sheehan. You tied this fellow up so you could have the opportunity. Well, if that's all there was to it, I had taken the job when it was first offered. You had a little trouble with Martin, didn't you? Well, I lost my temper, I guess. I mean you had a fight with him. If that's what you want to call it, Tommy hit him and he hit the ground. Over a young lady, wasn't it? Hey, wait a minute. Well, I don't see what that has to do with the accident this afternoon. May have a lot to do with it. As far as the accident is concerned, as you call it, I'm trying to find out whether you had trouble enough with Martin to load real bullets in a machine gun so you could shoot him down from the air. Well, that's ridiculous. Maybe. But you'll have to come with me, Duncan. Wait a minute. Are you accusing Tommy of trying to kill Martin? He's the only one who had any reason to attempt it. Besides, I want to know where he is pending any further investigation. He's not going to run away, Sheriff. I'll guarantee his appearance any time you want him. All right, Mr. Smith. If Tompkins will consider himself in technical custody, and not leave his quarters in the airport. I'll not force the issue, at least not until we hear what happens to Martin. Well, then I suppose it'd be all right to move the troop back to Hollywood. You see, we have reservations on the 6 o'clock train, and any delay would be uh, very expensive. Yeah, go ahead. Well, thank you. I'll be responsible for the entire troop, and I guarantee you to have them back here if and when you want them. Thanks very much. Thank you. Can't you think of something to do but sit around like a mourner? Why don't you go down to the hospital and see how your sister's making out? I bet he lose down there with her. No, I'm afraid you're stuck with me. Okay, but let me concentrate. Nobody's bothering you. Why don't you tell me what you're doing? Maybe I can help you. Well, in these detective stories, a man sits down with a list of suspects, then finds a guilty party through process of elimination. Sounds good. Well, that's what I'm doing. How did it work out? Well, I'm down to one name, all right. Who? Me. Come in. Hello, Tex. Mm -hmm. Come in, Tex. Good day. I uh, brought the camera gun over, Tommy. I didn't think you'd want to left out all night. Yeah, thanks. You just put it on the table there. I'm sorry about things, Tommy. Well, thanks, Tex. Uh, we'll straighten it out all right. Well, good night. Let me know if I can help. Okay, thanks. All right, Tex. Good night. You know, I thought that Martin was a big bag of wind at first, but he must have been a flyer at that. I was watching him coming down and all shot to pieces and everything like he must have been. He was still trying to pull it out of that spin. Takes nerve. 
Yeah, he sure had his nerve. He sure had his nerve. Say, that's what Sheehan said. Come on, help me boot off the ship. Hey, wait a minute, you're not supposed to leave here. I'll be back before anybody knows I'm gone. I gotta talk to Sheehan. Come on. Uh-oh, here we go. you, Sheriff? Yes, it's me. Where's Tompkins? Tompkins? Oh, you mean Tommy. Yes, Tommy. Well, what is it? What happened? Well, Sheriff, uh, it was a little crowded in the hangar, and we wheeled the plane out here. And Tompkins ran away with it, huh? Well, so he did. Well, that's just dandy. He's really put his foot in it now. Martin just died, and Tompkins is wanted for murder. This broadcast is made by order of the authorities. Tommy Tompkins, wanted for murder, escaped this evening from Three Point in a low-wing monoplane. License number NC16037. Should he attempt to land at any field, the plane is to be seized, and Tompkins handed over to the nearest police authority. A burial manhunt was launched tonight by every source of communication in an effort to obtain trace of Tommy Tompkins, the transport pilot who escaped from Three Point in a low wing monoplane number NC16037. If you see or hear of this plane, please communicate with this station immediately. Hello, City Desk, Fred speaking. Here's another flash on that Martin killing. General orders have been issued to all TWA. United and American Airlines pilots from coast to coast to report at once any plane that looks anything like the one Tompkins got away in. Sheriff thinks he ran away. Well, did you tell him he went to talk to Sheehan? Sure, and he wanted to know why. Oh, Skeeter, if you'd only gone with him. Well, he wouldn't let me. Well, Barbie, what are you doing here? Uncle Skeeter, I'm scared. Why don't you come home? Oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. I've been busy. Now, look, you go on over there on the couch and stretch out and go to sleep. That a boy. You're all excited. I said something that started me. Well? Come on, what did you say? Just get a thing, please. I don't know, it was something about... <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> Bobby, would you lay down and go to sleep? Oh, I want to play machine gun. Well, this isn't even a machine gun, it's a camera, Bobby. Camera? Then I only took his picture. I thought it was machine gun. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, come on and lay down and go to sleep. Hey, wait a minute. You what? I took his picture in the plane. What plane? In the back, just before it took off for the sun, I was playing machine gun. <laughs> Wait a minute, Bobby. You were playing machine gun with this camera, and you shot the plane. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Yeah. Well, where were you? In Tommy's plane. That's where the camera was. Only I thought it was a machine gun. And you shot the spad. And the director. The what? The what? The director was in the spad just before Tommy got in it, and I shot him. You mean Mr. Sheehan? Yeah. That's it. That's what Tommy was excited about. He said there was something between Martin and Sheehan. And we've got the pictures. Right here. Well, what are we waiting for?
How far is the railroad station? Oh, down the road, about a quarter of a mile. Thanks. Hey, what are you going to do with this plane? Holy mackerel, this is it. That's Sheehan, all right. Yeah, it's him in the plane. He's doing something to the gun. Well, that's developed enough. We'll run it through the hypo and get this print to the sheriff. Yes, that's Sheehan, all right. Yeah, it definitely shows him changing the bullets. Looks like he'll have to come back and do a little explaining. Yes? Yes, speaking. Oh, right. Tompkins just landed at Brunswick Field. Well, see, he's trying to catch the train. Yeah, if he gets it to Brunswick, the next stop's Mayfield. How long does it take to get to Mayfield, Mr. Smith? Well, in the big transport plane, it'll take 28 minutes. Let's get going. Call Mayfield and have a car standing by. Three points to Mayfield. Three points to Mayfield. Sorry to break in like this, Mr. Sheehan, but I had to talk to you. I thought you were under arrest. I was, but I had to see you. Martin's dead. Hmm. That puts you in a bad spot, doesn't it? Sit down. Have a drink? No, thanks. Mr. Sheehan, remember when Martin arrived? Yes. Well, you said something to him that day that may throw some light on this business. I? Yes. Remember when Glenn brought him out to the set where you were working? Were you glad to see him? Surely. We all like Earl. Apparently. But when you two were alone, you said you had your nerve to come here. And he said, I thought you'd forgotten that. I don't remember that, Tommy. Are you sure? Positive. It was right after the soldiers ran through the French village. And then the whole company moved over to the Red Cross tent. You two were standing alone. Where were you? I was right with the sound crew. Apparently, you two were standing near an open microphone. Hmm. Well, maybe the sound man heard it too. I I'll send for him. No, <clears throat> he was out rolling cable. I was alone. Well, you know, Tommy, there's a lot of kidding goes on around the set. Maybe you took something a little too seriously. No, sir. This wasn't kidding. Neither is this. So you killed him? Yes. I've been trying to do it for a long time. And you'd kill me too? With a certain amount of regret? Yes. I don't think they could do anything to you, Tommy. Beyond a slight inconvenience, nothing would happen to you. Since you'd naturally use what you overheard to clear yourself, the only way out for me. But that's just another murder. Right. After the first, the rest are around the house. Just how are you going to explain this one? Self-defense. Undoubtedly, the police are searching for you. Forced your way in here, attacked me Just why did Martin have his nerve? What has he done? Well, about five years ago, when I found that I was finished as an actor,
you see? There was nothing I could do about it. I'm sorry you're drawn into this, Tommy. So am I. Uh, I've changed my mind about that drink. I think I'll take one. Well, that's the next one. Tailspin Tommy and Sky Patrol. 